page and this guys is the game that I was done before I'm on the field of age once again I have 8 farms, I'm eating the berries and this time instead of going for the cavalry I'm going for crossbows so I just advancing advance it so I'm going to make an archer range I'm going to make a blacksmith instead of stable and I'm going to send a few more villagers to gold once I finish collecting here those farms, those berries I'm going to send all the villagers to the wood with the exception of two villagers that are going to remain uh, as food collectors as farmers in the example so I will go, I'm going up with 10 villagers here collecting food from the farms okay so I'm going up all the other villagers are collecting wood I'm going to make the wood upgrade and I will, I will also uh, retask one of those villagers because I want to have a minimum of six villagers here on the gold and I'm starting to make the archers as soon as I can I just need the house I, I should have made this house a bit earlier okay I'm fucking up <laughs> uh, you're going to see that the difference between the knight and the crossbowman at, uh, is that with the crossbowman you will keep making archers forever it's not like the knights that are really expensive and you have to make a few and stop to, to take care of your economy the archers are not like this the archers are just fine for the economy because they are cheap and they cost no food so once you start making the archers man you are going to keep make those dudes forever <laughs> please get used to this so I'm making archers here I'm going for the second archery range I'm once again going for the houses that I was doing in the previous game the ones that are going to defend my base here on the right side and one important thing is uh, for the archers is that different from the knights they really need the upgrades so in order to be at least functional you always will need to make the fletching this upgrade here will give you one extra attack and one extra range and this is really important you could you can for example when you have crossbows out range units like the skirmishers so even the encounters they might be not able to kill your archers now I'm on castaway I'm going to upgrade the wood as always and after I upgrade the wood I'm going to upgrade the crossbowman here Different from the knights, by the time I reach Castle, I already have at least 5 or 6 archers. So if I was going for the knights, I would be starting now to make the, the knights, but with the archers I already have those. And another thing that I find really really important when you are going for the archers is that it's always good to have a good position, it's always good to keep yourself on some hill or somewhere that give you some advantage like this hill here and now that I'm keep making my villagers and I will keep the production of archers it's just a matter of choosing what upgrades I will need if you are going to be really aggressive or you need to have one more extra range you feel this need you might just sacrifice a bit of your economy get more gold and make the Botkin arrow the second upgrade for the archers if the fletching alone is enough to keep you in the game then you are really luck because you don't need to do anything else you just have to go there for the to keep the crossbow your farms are going to go over different from the knights I can already uh, go for two more town centers with only five to six villagers on the gold I will keep the production and I'm my economy can I will keep making archers because I'm not food dependent as I am when I'm doing the knights and this is one of the big keys of going archers your booming is going to be much better but archers are slower they are not as strong as the knights are on the castaway so one of the secrets of making the crossbowman useful is to keep them always in numbers is to keep them always massed so if you have massed archers you are doing it right if you are always keeping your numbers low mm, you are doing a bad job so here no secret keep making the farms in order to make your town centers work 
Sometimes you might uh, wait a bit to add more town centers. Some other times you might just add three town centers right away like I did here. Even if you let them idle for a bit, it w there, will be ca there will be some cases where having more town centers is good because you will have those this defensive tool that where you can just gather the villagers and ride yourself from any kind of danger. This is one of the uses of the town center, they are not mainly a uh, building to make villagers. And from here you are just keep to making farms for the town centers, archers on the archery ranges, houses when you are getting close to the house number. And that's how game uh, is gonna go. I don't think there will be much variation from here from what you have seen in the night. The basics of the booming are the same. The, what you want to do is to have at least 18 farms because with these 18 farms you will keep the town centers all producing. And of course, different from the knights, you never stop at making archers only if you needed to invest a lot in economy or if you didn't need all this army. But usually you want to keep making archers. Right now I have 18 farms, making houses, enemies killing my archers with their skirmishers. <laughs> You see, the crossbows with the extra range are really better. I'm not microning, I'm only using the distance here, the extra range. And the two, the two extra range is enough to make the archers to kill their counter on the field of age, the skirmishers. So this is the importance of making the fletching upgrade. You always want to make the fletching upgrade. Different from the knights, sometimes keeping with only uh, Two archer ranges might be enough for you. Sometimes you don't need to add four archer ranges like I was doing with the stables by the same time. But there's always this choice. You can just keep two archer ranges so you are going to be on Imperial a lot faster. Or if you want, this is the point where you can add two more and have four or even three archer ranges working. I'm usually a big fan of having only two. Because if you never stop making archers, only two are enough to keep you making lots and lots of crossbowmen, okay? Another thing that is different from the knights is that there is a really important upgrade for the crossbowmen that is the ballistic. And the ballistic upgrade is one that will increase the accuracy of your crossbowmen. They are going to shoot targets that are running with perfect... Uh, perfect answers so they are going to shoot a hundred percent of their enemies right down they are not going to miss any arrows after you make the ballistics and the economy when you are going for archers is quite simple you just want to have 30 farms and all the other villagers you are going to send to the gold so I'm going to send a lot of villagers here to the gold because I already have 30 farmers okay I'm going for the Bodkin Arrow, if you didn't yet, this is probably past the time because your enemies might be doing it on 23 minutes if, if they were just going feudal right now and you are going to make an investment of a lot of resources 300 wood and 175 uh, gold in order to make the ballistic and once you do this you are going to be really powerful so this is an important upgrade for the archers it will make them not miss so if your enemy is running with knights in this direction for example in the where the cursor is you are going to shoot down all the archers it's really important you need to try this man really nice and if you want to make your, your uh, archers more like deadly machines you can make the thumb ring so they will fire faster you can keep making their armor there's nothing much to add from here. Since you already did the university, you just need one more uh, building in order to go for the imperial age. So you can just add a church like this, for example. And from this, you can be thinking of going imperial because you have a full economy. So you are almost on ready to click. When you are doing archers, you will notice that it's really easy to click faster because as I said, they are not so heavy for the economy as the knights are. So once you get used to doing the archers, to, to doing the knights, doing the archers is even easier. The only thing is that you, sh you must choose your fights really 
wisely. You must remember that you are slower. Always walking with big groups, always if possible with your allies helping you. Do not go wandering alone in the middle of the map if you doesn't need to. And from this point on, you just need to go Imperial and keep playing, but this is basically how you play Fast Castle into Archers. I just watched a game recently between Tyrant and Aftermath, where Liri used this strategy with own one of the best civilizations to do it, the Mayans that have cheap archers, uh, good walls that are uh, essential too for defense, and he did great uptime. The only difference from the build order is that after some time, instead of, in of investing in more archery ranges, he started to go heavy on the stone to switch into plumed archers. So. This is probably a, a path for you to go. And right now, guys, I have almost the resources that I need to go Imperial with 28. You might notice that I can go a lot faster with Archers than I could with Knights. And that's basically it. From here, you can uh, scatter villagers on the stone, on the gold, to prepare to do whatever you want. As I said before, if you were going Imperial, you will need the minimum of six building of whatever you are doing never less than this because you need to have a good replacement line you need to keep making the upgrades of the economy if you stop it at anyone here and of course keep making the houses so basically this is the difference from the archers from the knights you can add uh, town centers a lot faster you can boom a lot better if you're not uh, I, I want to give a tip if you do not want to have idle TCs and you do not need it to make TCs for defensive purpose, just make 12, 6 farms per TC and keep adding them slowly, slowly. Do your economy on your own time. If you respect the basic fundament that is being uh, sustainable, you are going to do a great economy. So this is the part 2 of the ba uh, Fast Castle build order, the Fast Castle into the Crossbowman. Here are those dudes, soon to be Arbalests, and here is a really simple economy. 30 farms, since you are not using a lot of food, you are going to reach Imperial with really accidental food that can you can use to upgrade another army, you can use to make Sigrun, so that's basically this. I hope you have enjoyed this build order. Now for technology, the castaway time is really uh, fast, you can do it in like 16 minutes and a few seconds. And the military here is going to grow a lot, if you look at the timeline, you start doing the archers before you go castle and you keep messing them. No secret about it. <laughs> uh, I'm not so creative for the build orders today guys. I'm about to stop playing, I believe that I did those two board orders that I wanted to do before. <laughs>